Hello and welcome. To solve these simultaneous equations, let us start by simplifying this logarithmic equation as far as possible. Now here we have log to base 2 of x, while here we have log to base 4 of y. The first thing we are going to do is to change the base of this logarithm from base 4 to base 2 to match this term. So when we apply the change of base formula to this term, we have that log to base 4 of y is equal to log to base 2 of y. Remember, 2 is the new base. Divided by log to base 2 of the old base, which is 4. Now, let us look at this denominator. Of course, you know that this can be written as log to base 2 of 2 squared. 2 squared is equal to 4. But now, remember that log to base a of a to power b is equal to b. So that simply means that log to base 2 of 2 to power 2 is equal to 2. So log to base 2 of 4 is equal to 2. That means that log to base 4 of y is the same as log to base 2 of y divided by 2, which is still the same thing as half times log to base 2 of y. So we can rewrite this logarithmic equation as log to base 2 of x plus half times log to base 2 of y is equal to 3. Now to get rid of this fraction, let us multiply through this equation by 2. So here we have 2 times log to base 2 of x plus half times 2, of course, is equal to 1. Here we have log to base 2 of y, and 3 times 2 is equal to 6. The next thing we are going to do is that we will apply the power rule of logarithms to this first term. That is the rule that says that we can take up this multiplier 2 to become the exponent of x. When we apply this rule to this term, we have that log to base 2 of x squared plus log to base 2 of y is equal to 6. But now remember the addition rule for logarithms. That is the rule that says that log a plus log b is equal to log a multiplied by b. That means that we can write this left hand side as log to base 2 of x squared multiplied by y is equal to 6. And of course, you know that this statement simply means that 2 to the power 6 is equal to x squared y. So we have that x squared y is equal to 2 to the power 6. And of course, 2 to the power 6 is equal to 64. So the two equations we now have to solve is x plus y is equal to 65 and x squared times y is equal to 64. And of course, you know that it is very easy to solve these two equations. All we have to do is to get an expression for y from the first equation. Of course, you know that from here, when we subtract x from both sides of this equation, we have that y is equal to 65 minus x. Then we simply plug in 65 minus x for y in the second equation. So we have that x squared times 65 minus x is equal to 64. Now when we expand this, we have 65x squared minus x squared times x is x and this is equal to 64. Moving these two terms over to the right hand side, we have 0 on the left hand side, and this is now equal to this going over becomes x cubed. This going over becomes minus 65x squared. And of course, we have 64. So, next is to solve this cubic equation. How are we going to solve this equation? Let us test for values of x that satisfy this equation. Let us try 1. 
when we substitute x equal to 1 into this equation, we have 1 cubed minus 65 times 1 squared plus 64. Of course, 1 cubed is 1. 65 times 1 squared is equal to 65 plus 64. 1 plus 64 is 65. 65 minus 65 is equal to 0. So that means that x equal to 1 is a root of this cubic equation. And hence, x minus 1 is a factor of this cubic expression on the right hand side. What does this mean? It means that when we divide this cubic expression by x minus 1, we are not going to have any remainder. So to find the quadratic factor of this cubic expression, what we are now going to do is that we will divide this cubic expression by x minus 1 using the synthetic division method. So doing the division, we have the coefficient of x cubed is 1. The coefficient of x squared is minus 65. There is no term in x, so the coefficient is going to be 0. And the constant term is 64. We are dividing by 1. Bring down this 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Minus 65 plus 1 is minus 64. 1 times minus 64 is minus 64. 0 minus 64 is minus 64. 1 times minus 64 is minus 64. 64 minus 64 is equal to 0. Of course, you know that this is the coefficient of x squared. This is the coefficient of x, and this is the constant term. So what this simply means is that when you factorize this cubic expression, you have x minus 1 multiplied by x squared minus 64x minus 64. And of course, this is equal to 0. So to solve this cubic equation, all we have to do is to solve this linear equation and to solve this quadratic equation. Already, we have solved this linear equation and we have that x is equal to 1. So the next thing we are going to do is to solve this quadratic equation. Now, we cannot solve this quadratic equation by factorization. So let us solve it by completing the square. So we have x squared minus 64x is equal to 64. The next thing we are going to do is that we will add the square of half the coefficient of x to both sides of this equation. Now, the coefficient of x is minus 64. Half of it is minus 32. So we are going to add minus 32 squared to both sides of this equation. When we do that, we have x squared minus 64 x plus minus 32 squared is equal to 64 plus minus 32 squared. Now, of course, you know that this is a perfect square. So we take 1x and we take 1 minus 32. And we square. And this is equal to 64 plus. Now, minus 32 squared is equal to 1024. 64 plus 1024 is equal to 1088. So from here we have x minus 32 squared is equal to 1088. And of course, to solve this equation, we take square root of both sides. When we do that, we have that x minus 32 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1088. But 1088 is equal to 64 times 17. So we have that x minus 32 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 64 is 8. Then we have root 17. And of course, when we add 32 to both sides of this equation, we have that x is equal to 
32 plus or minus 8 root 17. So from here, we have two values of x. We have that x is equal to 32 plus 8 root 17 or 32 minus 8 root 17. Now, this value of x is positive. While this value of x is negative. But when you look at this equation, of course, you know that the argument of a logarithm cannot be negative. So this value of x is unacceptable. We only take the positive value of x. So all in all, we have found two values of x that satisfy these two equations. We have found that x is equal to 1. And we have found that x is equal to 32 plus 8 root 17. And of course, to find the values of y, we go back to this equation. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 65 minus 1, which is equal to 64. So the first point that satisfies these two equations simultaneously is 1, 64. And in this case, when x is equal to 32, plus 8 root 17. Y is equal to 65 minus 32 plus 8 root 17. We have 65 minus 32. Minus plus is minus 8 root 17. 65 minus 32 is 33 minus 8 root 17. So the second point that satisfies these two equations simultaneously is 32 plus 8 root 17, comma, 33 minus 8 root 17. So these are the values of x and y that satisfy these two equations simultaneously. And with that, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoy such content, please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a thumbs up to support the channel. Thanks for watching. And you can see more tutorials here.